today's video is going to be about university and the things you should be considering when you're doing your research into what university you would like potentially want to go to. Disclaimer about how I am not paid by any university or I am not sponsored by anyone. So like the universities I will be using in this video as examples are not ad scented. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, also this is not like a final list of like like a checklist of what you should be doing but like I got like what I found successful even though as you saw before I was going to do that myself and at the end of the day like the university that I applied to I ended up going to but anyway I did get into the university that I applied to so yeah right let's go another quick note if I'm looking down I have my notes on paper here um obviously there's like loads of things that we need to talk about so if I'm looking down I'm just reminding myself so I'll start off by talking about kind of the generic things that Kind of everyone should be considering when they are researching um, for a university in the UK to apply to and then I'll go on to talk about my kind of tactic on how to narrow the universities down. So the first thing you should everyone should be considering is the course they're applying to. The most important, I highlight the word important, the most important, most important, it's the most important thing in this video. First of all, if you don't know what course you're, you want to apply to, then that's that's a completely different story. This video is not for you. Close this video now, go and decide what course you want to apply to. The course is the most important thing and these are the reasons why. First of all, once you know your course, you know what universities you can't apply to because some universities don't offer that course, right? There are like alternatives, for example, say, I'm just making this up, say if you want to do economics, a university might not offer economics, but they might offer economics and politics. So like, there are those options, but you just need to know what course. So then you can kind of see what universities you can't apply to at all. Then you got to consider that some universities specialise in certain courses and have a reputation to be good at that certain course. So like, for example, there's like classic names coming up like LSE for economics or for example, engineering for Imperial or like something like history for Durham or something. I don't know, but like there are universities that have reputations for certain subjects and completely opposite. Some universities are known to be not good at that subject. For example, Southampton, it's, it's known to be like a really good science yeah, engineering school, but like they say that the, you know, the humanities section, I know they're trying to improve on it, but like it's not up to the standard of their science and, the, and, and engineering department. Also, some universities make it harder for certain students to get into certain courses, even though it's the same course. So, some, so I'm trying to think of some examples, like some people, some people, some universities have what their circumstances, which kind of allow the university to lower the person's grade instead of getting like a, instead of being offered an AA, they'll be offered like a A, B, B or something like that and um, there are also courses where you have to be tactically aware of what you could apply to for example if you apply to like a bachelor's degree uh, which is a three-year standard university course your your offer will be way lower than applying for integrated masters um, which is a four-year which includes a master's but it's just really harder to get into and what most people do not know is you can go into the masters once you're at uni. Once once you're performing at a two one level at university, you can switch like this. It's so easy to switch, especially if your tutors and your lecturers know you. Then it's just going to be like clockwork. Like so, you got to be tactical, and you can always apply for the bachelor's. You're basically applying for the course. You're not applying for a bachelor's or master's anyway. You also have to check each and every module on the website. So when you go to a course, check the modules I repeat check the modules it's the most important thing I don't care what anyone says mechanical engineering at Bristol is not the same as mechanical engineering at Warwick but there's also this element where some universities jump you straight onto the course however some universities make you do a joint first and second year then you get to specialize you got to consider these things it's, it's important and when it comes to like your future and when you're doing internships and you know all that stuff which is kind of far in the future but, like you have to consider these things it's important that you know what you apply to and you know what the drawbacks and the advantages are of your course. Then you have to consider wherever you want to move out. So there's that kind of three options right now. Yes, I definitely want to move out. Yeah, no, I don't want to move out. I want to stay at home. And I'm not sure. I'll, or slash, I don't really care. 
I just want to go to a good university or I want to go to this university. For me, I would always suggest moving out, 100%. YouTube videos I've watched, the online research I've done, the teachers I've spoken to, friends, family I've spoken to, everyone says you should move out. The ones that have moved out, loved it. The ones that didn't move out were telling me to move out 100%. It's so that you get to experience the whole package as a whole. So you have to consider that as well. Then there's that X factor of whether you would want to live in London or do you care? There are so many universities in London that offer so many courses that like you have to consider whether you want to you would want to live in London. There's like a whole separate argument on whether you should be living in London or as a student um, the drawbacks and advantages but like you just have you kind of have to pause the video right now consider whether you mind living in London and paying extra money for your activities and your standard of living. Another thing to consider about London universities is that London universities are able to make higher entry requirements because there is so much demand. Consider this, there's people in London that are not allowed to move out of London. There's people in London that want to live in London. There's people from outside of London that want to come to London. There's people, international people, that would love to come to London and study in London. There's so much like demand that like there's the demand is over here and the supply is over here that like they can push the entry requirements just to just to um, reduce the demand of it and meet the supply of it. So that's something you have to consider. Then there's the kind of classic um, choice about whether you want to go to Oxbridge or not. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of a like, separate argument again. If you do want to go to Oxbridge, that's obviously one of your five choices. If you don't, then, you know, it's not that important. Then you have to consider the rankings as a whole. Now, this part of the video is very important. At the same time, take it as with a pinch of salt, right? When you look at like university rankings for different courses and you know student satisfaction and stuff like that, every ranking shows every university in a different way, right? And all rankings are different. Like there is never the same top 20 in every ranking. So there's like kind of different rankings I would suggest you look at. So the university's ranking in general, then the course ranking, so your individual courses ranking in the UK, then look at student satisfaction for the university and for the course. Like, kind of notice the, the fact that there's two elements into this. There's the university and there's the course. When you're applying to the university, you're also applying to the course, so you have to consider both things. There are two categories when it comes to universities. Universities that have been good in the past and have that, rep that reputation with employers um, that's just gonna last for 100 years. And then there's universities that are new and that are upcoming and are very good but employers are kind of getting used to them but they're not fully in contact with them and maybe they're the opportunities offered to the students at that at that university are not as great as the ones that are, have the history then you have to consider kind of like student life and how you'll be living and rent and your budget and where you'll be living and how far it is and where the lecture theatres are, all this technical stuff you can look into, but like that's at a later stage. But it's still important and it's extremely important in the way that like you do your research. So look at YouTube videos, look at student blogs. Like most universities have bloggers that write about it. Again, they'll probably write about it positively, but still you're getting some opinions about it. There's like so many resources that you can use. Campus, um, it's an app um, you can download on your phone where students talking about universities and there's so much and Facebook groups and friends and families and just do your research I can't emphasize now it comes to how I kind of made my choice right I kind of suggest it to everyone so there are 108 universities I would make a list about 10 10 is kind of like the perfect number 10 11 8 9 12 kind of about there make a list of the ones that you would apply to based on the university and the course together right so that's let's say you've got 10 right then what i would do is do my research look into the modules visit the place watch videos ask people about it ask my teachers find people that have been there find pe second years that have been there and just try to get as much information look at where you will probably be living look at the accommodation look how much rent costs look at how far you are away from home and whether you would like want to be doing like a journey every let's say month back home just to check up you need to look at these kind of things so you have 10 you've done your research 
then I would have to kind of start cutting them down. I, what I would do, I wouldn't cut in bulk. What I would do is write everything down. And then you probably see university one or two that I have, you're like, mm, I'm not, I'm not kind of feeling it. Like, I'm not feeling it, so cross them off your list. You've got eight left, right? Then you start to kind of think tactically. Do I want to apply there? What kind of course is it? Is it integrated masters? Is it, is it a bachelor's? Um, then you start to tactically analyze it, but don't knock off any yet. You got eight. So then you consider how you be, like kind of the process, right? So forget about what your school says. Listen to me. Go for free inspirational, once and two safe. Don't go for like anything below your predicted grades, right? Don't because they're probably one bad universities, probably two not your potential. Three, they're bound to accept you. Just. Just trust me and go for free inspirational, probably above your uh, predict grade or at your predict grade. And two, just on the grade you would think you would get if it was a worst case scenario. You will be solid. You will be solid. And that's when you kind of think tactically, oh, um, I need to knock this university off, not apply because I've already got three aspirational ones or I've got three of the same grade requirements. So like, that's when you start to play tactically. Remember? Universities have got places. They want you. You're not desperate. You apply where you want. You go where you want. Don't worry about them giving you the offer. You will get the offer. Focus on trying to meet the offer and applying where you want to go. Because then you'll be driven and you'll focus on your work because you want to go there so badly. There's this case about applying to two, two, of, two courses at the same universities. At the same universities. At the same university. I wouldn't suggest it because it shows that you're not passionate about your course and you've not made a decision and it just undermines your personal statement. So like I wouldn't suggest that you can do it. I don't know anyone that's done it. At the end of the day, if it comes to it, you can sort it out on results day, you can call them up. There's so many options. I wouldn't suggest it, but like, yeah, again, I'm not like a professional. I haven't been doing this for years. Speak to your teachers about it, speak to like people that have done it in the past or, you know, just try to get advice on it. The more advice you have, the more of an informed decision you can make and the better for you in the long run. Peace!